<laughs> so I dented my car <laughs> by hitting a pole because I backed up into it. See what? <laughs> I'm so pissed off. <laughs> I'm so pissed off. That is a bummer. Isn't this a brand new car? Yeah. Well, I asked Jessica if Brian can come um, today to help yeah. me look at it and fix it. And she said the latest that he can come is like tomorrow. That's the earliest. I, I can't word right now. I have a headache because I'm so pissed off about this. Luckily, it's not cracked. So most likely, if we have a blow dryer and a plunger, I can fix it myself. You think you're gonna be able to fix that with a blow dryer and a plunger? I was watching videos this morning. I'm so pissed off. last night. What's this for? Carving turkey or something? Alright, let's get to it. I'm gonna be making something big today. I decided I watched Miracle cook up that delicious uh, thing last week and made me want to cook. So I've been thinking about this all weekend and I decided I'm gonna do a curry lentil with coconut and um, there's gonna be quinoa in it. And also I'm gonna do some black beans and an array of vegetables. There will be asparagus, celery, uh, carrots and tomatoes as well as a, a lot of this stuff here and I told you about the coconut oil so it's gonna be like I said a coconut curry but when you come to coconut oil you're either gonna get it refined or unrefined and there's a big difference the refined stuff is good for like rubbing on your skin I mean you can eat it obviously it's, it's edible but it doesn't have the same uh, the same like dense quality of this unrefined coconut oil so I would always advise if you're gonna cook with it cook with the unrefined stuff if you're gonna like swish out your mouth with oil pulling use the refined stuff if you're gonna use it medicinally use the refined stuff use it unrefined today I also have olive oil avocado oil and sesame oil now there's a trick to doing the lentils and I'm gonna show you the trick um, I found in my in my journey that when you're making lentils you end up boiling them usually but before you do that, you want to toast them in an oil, just lentils in oil. You get them toasting, you hear them crackling and breaking because, and then you add the water and then you start boiling it because that toasting with oil breaks open the pores of the lentils. And then when you start adding in ingredients and flavor into the water while it's boiling, it's more easy to pass through the membrane of the lentil. You have just delicious lentils, it's incredible. I got, I bought this lentils in a big bag from like Amazon and they sent me, uh, they had beans, a few, beans in it. See those brown beans down by the bottom? It reminds me of how imperfect society is. Like you expect things just to be, you push the button and then it happens, but like, sometimes there's beans in your lentils, man. I'm going big, dude. So another thing about cooking, this is gonna take a couple hours probably, and I, it's just a lot of time commitment to cook every day for a couple hours, so I like to triple up or quadruple up the ingredients and then have like stew for weeks, literally. If it's just me, I could probably eat what I'm going to make for like the next two and a half weeks, but hopefully I'll eat a long time before then by a bunch of people in the house. And since I have so many lentils, I'm going all the way. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to toast these in here, start boiling the quinoa in here, and then add them together. And then I'm going to be doing the sauce in this. I'm going all the way, man. I mean, we've got so much quinoa and this stuff. It's like a miracle. Quinoa is like a pasta, but it's, it's, it's also like a... Kind of like a fiber. It's depending on how long you boil it. If you boil it for like six minutes, you're gonna get an al dente quinoa that's more like chewy, more like crunchy almost. But if you boil it for 12 minutes, it turns like gooey, like a pasta. And you, I mean, it's, you don't even know you're not eating pasta sometimes. It's so amazing. And man, it absorbed flavor nicely. I'm really excited to work with quinoa. In fact, I'm gonna double up on my quinoa. This, this is our, uh, 
pantry, at least one of them. And this is the, the ground floor pantry. This is where we sort a lot of our goods. And uh, it's kind of nice. Like a mini, like a stock room off the main kitchen. Let me get this light behind you. Carter Banks. How's it going, man? It was really fantastic for making this delicious stew. Delicious. Oh, dude, I saw a YouTube video where you made uh, stew the other day. I think this is going to be similar. Hey, man, I'm excited to try it. Me too. All right, we've got the quinoa and lentils down. I'm going to be prepping now, slicing all this garlic, uh, carrots, tomato, celery, and asparagus. That's going to take me... 20 minutes or so. People often give me a hard time at how slow I am when I cook. I watched, I don't know if you've ever seen Hell's Kitchen, Gordon Ramsay, genius. But uh, I laugh about it because I would fail so hard on Hell's Kitchen because I don't cook fast. I get, you know, I never really, I worked in the restaurant industry for 12 years or something like that as a waiter. And the cooks, man, they're, I mean, they're machines. My fear is that a lot of quality can get lost if you rush. Because I think cooking at low temperature longer allows the flavor to emulsify a lot better than high temperature fast. A better chef might tell me different, might have better advice. So Gordon, get over here. Garlic's incredibly uh, fortuitous, like it doesn't really rot. If it does, it rots like in a little spot and the rest of the garlic contains it, contains it and all the other little garlics are protected. Onions are similar. When onions rot, you'll see they rot like layer by layer and then you peel off the rotted layer and it's a completely fresh onion underneath it. You know, I cut the tomato. I do these a little differently. Um, when I cut tomatoes, I use a serrated blade whenever possible, rather than press, because if I have to push down on the tomato to cut, it pushes the juice out of the tomato, it breaks it. But if you just pull the knife back and forth without pressing down at all with a serrated blade, it tears it apart and opens it up and then it, it slices effortlessly. Boom. It's always sad to see one go. Rather than go like up against the skin, which you can still do since you got a serrated blade, I flip them over because when you cut into this part, the inside, it's so much easier to cut than trying to cut the out from the outside in. It's like an art project. Don't ever let anyone tell you that you're cooking wrong. There's no right way. Just do it how you do it. You can smell what it needs when you're cooking. Sometimes you'll have two ingredients in a pot. You'll smell a third ingredient that's not in it. If that happens, add that ingredient. See that's a little black and darkened. Take off that end. Carrots are pretty incredible, man. <laughs> Carrots, dude. Nothing like it on, in the universe. Incredible food. Especially with that garlic on the cutting board. This is why I would never make it in the restaurant industry. I, I think I cut too slow. I'm gonna cut the carrots and the sweet potatoes into little bits and then boil them. Maybe. You gotta be careful when you touch your eyes like this. I'm gonna do a sweet potato. Um, it's actually more of a lentil quinoa with like curry and uh, it's gonna coconut curry. This is one of the most, I don't know what we call underrated foods on the planet. Yams, sometimes they call them. The, I, the, the absolutely incredible, incredible, incredible food. I, I don't know how to otherwise describe how phenomenal these things are. So I'm, right now I'm skinning them. They come out pretty dirty usually and often there's this black stuff on them. I imagine that's mold, I, I could be wrong. It looks like dirt at the very least, so I wanna cut off as much as possible. And you can see how sometimes it gets in there. It'll be black on the surface, that's what it looks like right under it. This is all from heart. This is all just make it up as I go. And it's a lot of it's done by smell. You really can't do it wrong. I mean, you can add too much of something and ruin the flavor, but it's still fun. And like, I've, I've ruined so many dishes by adding too much of something, where you pick up the dish and you're like, wow, it tastes like I'm eating Thai. And it's like a big lentil stew, you know? But over time you learn like, you can see here, I've got this array of ingredients I'm gonna add to not add too much. And Papa John actually gave me a little, also kind of echoed that sentiment. Simplicity, simplicity goes a long way when you cook. So it was a little bit of a course correction. I decided partway through, I'm actually boiling the carrots. I cut them into halves and then I'm gonna boil them. And then what'll happen is once they get soft, I'll mash them into the sauce. We got some celery here. Celery is almost always, when you buy them in a bundle, come out really dirty along the base of the inside. So whenever you rip a, a piece off, be sure to give these a nice, a wash, a deep wash. Running water. Let us give thanks to this amazing technology. God, it's so good. You're just chewing a piece of celery and then start chewing on these fibers like gum. You can chew on them forever if you want. 
I'm gonna cut off the, the butts of all these dirty ones here. I'm gonna do it like this. I try to use as much of every vegetable that I can rather than haphazardly like cut a bunch of it off. I'll try and just cut off the parts that aren't really good. I'll do, uh, sometimes I'll go in the middle first. If I have a, a long stalk vegetables like this, I'll cut them down the middle and then I'll take the one half and put it on top and then cut them all at once. I'm using a pretty small cutting board, which is, so I'm not gonna lump them all together. What's up, Miracle? Hey, what are you doing? Uh, it's gonna be a coconut curry lentil okay. and um, with quinoa. Ooh, sounds interesting. Yeah, very good, I was inspired by your cooking last week. Yay. At least I'm inspiring some people. <laughs> Thousands. <laughs> this pot's not big enough for the stew, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna be doing some some back and forth with these pots. I'll be boiling, tipping, dumping, moving, emptying, refilling. I'm gonna end up with a sauce in this pot probably, or this pot. The final prep ingredient right here, this is asparagus. I used to hate this stuff. Uh, growing up, they would ask me what my least favorite food was, and I would always tell them it was asparagus. It was so bitter and gross. And I tell you what, today, it is so bitter, but it's delicious. It's like medicine. I, I used to eat too much sugar as a kid, so my taste buds were all messed up. Like I couldn't smell. Carrots weren't sweet, you know? If, if, if a carrot's not sweet to you, you're missing out. It's probably, you're probably overly sugared. When you get that stuff out of your system, man, things like this, they, like you can taste the, you can feel the iron. Like it's just a, and yeah, it's bitter. Man, it's good. These I gotta cut a lot of the ends off. They uh, they get really hard, kind of fibrous down by the bottom. So I usually cut those tip those ends off, and then I'll, I'll end up using the rest of this. I end up going with a serrated knife for most of it. I'm a big fan of serrated knives. The heads of these asparagi are uh, so intricate. Look at that. Look, kind of purple. It looks like a, a a bud of weed in a lot of ways. But they're so, compared to the stock, there's so much going on on the head. Oh, jeez. The boiling is going really good here. This is uh, the carrots and sweet potatoes are turning into a mash. So it's, it's easier than like trying to saute them down from hard to soft, like I said earlier. But once you get them all mashed, you just kind of put it in. It becomes part of the sauce. It's awesome. Don't even know they're in there. These are red lentils. You get lentils of all different kinds. You get green lentils, um, I've seen yellow lentils and red lentils. Red lentils are pretty unique in that when you boil them, they explode into a goo like no other lentil. The other lentils kind of stay together and stay a little hard. These things will just become a sauce, which is why I like to use them in big stew type saucy things. It's my, by far my favorite lentil. And then this is quinoa, the miracle grain. I think it's considered a grain. They're just incredible. One little thing and they blow up into these. Mmm, mmm, good for you. So I got my lentils here. I'm gonna add a sesame oil. I don't boil them straight away. First I toast them. Get them high. All right, lentils are oiled. Now these things are gonna start to toast. You'll hear them start to crackle. And when they do, you gotta move it. You gotta move them fast. When they start to crackle, you gotta start stirring around and they'll start to burn on the bottom. I'm gonna strain this out now. This will make a fantastic sauce. I almost am sad to see that liquid go. I need a bigger stove with three more pans because I need to be, really right now I should have the sauce on and going with the tomatoes. So it's, it's unfortunate that I've got all this stuff on top, but I, I can fix that. I'm going to move a bunch of these vegetables off of here. This is basically prep vegetables that I didn't have space for. So I put them on this pan. Um, yeah, and then I'm gonna get this. So this is gonna turn into a nice uh, kind of a stewed sauce and get it started. So I got these vinegars. I'm gonna do some white wine vinegar. This is organic. It's kind of filtered, unfiltered. This is the the filtered regular stuff that you can see. First I thought something was wrong with this. Then I realized it was unfiltered, unpasteurized. Oh, that's good. A little white vinegar, goes great with tomatoes. You know what goes really great with tomatoes is balsamic vinegar. So, I have that here. I'm going deep. This stuff brings out the sweetness in a lot of ways. It's much sweeter than the other vinegars. 
probably the sweetest vinegar that I know of. I also brought out, just for fun, a little red wine vinegar and rice vinegar. Put a dash of each. So one thing I've noticed when you're cooking, if you're cooking multiple things, like I'm gonna do the lentils separate, then I'm gonna do this. If I add a little bit of the same thing to both, they meet better when they come together. If I only have the red wine in here, it doesn't, it's not that it's bad, it just, there's something connecting in having the ingredient in both things when they come together already. So just a tiny bit is like makes it prepped like a vaccine. This is always my, my favorite part is the, is the uh, tomatoes, like the stewing of the sauce. I'm doing this on a medium heat. I don't wanna do it too hot because I don't wanna burn any of this stuff. That's a big problem with cooking. If you, if you burn something at any point in the process, it'll taste burnt. The entire, for the rest of the time. Similar with coffee, maybe a lesser known detail. If you pour, if you make coffee with boiling water, it burns the coffee. And sometimes you'll go to a coffee place and you'll be like, oh, it doesn't burn because they, they, they made it too fast. They, they brewed it too hot. Not too fast, but too hot. Although heat is a type of speed. The movement of energy. These are the kind of things I think about when I'm alone. I'm gonna salt this too. Salted tomato and vinegar. So the reason I didn't add any oil yet to the, to the sauce is because I found that if you add the oil too early in the sauce, in the tomato breaking down, it, it, it coats the tomato and the tomato won't break apart as easily. The oil kind of seals it up. So I just do vinegar and salt in the beginning and that kind of allows it to rip apart, rip itself apart. And then later in the process, I'll start adding oils. Yeah, man, good, my God. You read like to salty tomato juice at just the right time. That made me like, think of this picnic we had when I was like nine or something that I just remember. God, that was good. I haven't had vegetables recently. I've been eating a lot of like, uh, canned and boxed and pre-made stuff. So get in the fresh shit. That's the, uh, that's what I like. Oh, and I also, I did just use a little bit of this pink Himalayan sea salt, but I've got miso. I don't know if you've ever had miso before. This stuff is really incredible. It's a salt substitute. It's basically, when you're gonna add salt, you can add, you can add salt or you can add miso. Oh, these are coming along. Oh, I burned some. Damn. Just like I said, I left it on there for a little bit too long, you see? Now you got all these little black ones. Not too many, but I got preoccupied and lost 30 seconds, this is like 30 seconds too long. So it's not the end of the world, it's just a little bit of them. I'm gonna try and get them out of there though because they, they will affect the flavor of the stew overall. I'm gonna let this uh, this fan sit for a minute. Taking it off. So a little, bit of, a little bit of burn. That's what I get for talking to the camera. I'm humble, I can handle it. Now I'm gonna add water and a boil, get the boil on and start seasoning them. I'll season them in their water while they're boiling. I love this sound of adding running water to hot lentils. I love that sound. I'll probably end up adding more water as needed to this. Hey, look, the little black ones are floating to the top. Maybe I can scoop them out. That's funny. I didn't expect that. No, oh, I don't want to lose any of the, the good stuff. It's like I say, man. Cooking is an experimentational art form. I love this stuff because it does not always go as you expect. It's coming along well. I'm gonna move this sauce to the back burner here on a really low temperature because this is pretty much ready to get cooked with the main stuff. What up, Allison? Hi. <laughs> I would like to see the microwave. Come on in. <laughs> Does this look as ridiculous as I think it looks? Looks great. It smells good. Nice. Cool. Good. It smells good. Okay, I just... so you were able to use this thing. Yeah. Yeah. It's good. I was thinking that after. I was like, I thought we had something like that. I'm gonna get a big, <laughs> one of these that's like twice the size, I think. That'll help. Oh, yeah. That one's kind of small. You don't have one? There's one? I have one, but it's the same size. Mm -hmm. Oh, so excited for this. There's gonna be so much food. The lentils have uh, already soaked up a great deal of the water that I put in. So I'm gonna add one. Give it a little salt, get it going. A little bit more. Same with the lentils. I think a great start for lentil seasoning is curry powder. 
curry powder is cool. They call it curry powder, but it's actually just a bunch of different things added together. I'm gonna read off some of those ingredients for you right now. We have cumin, coriander, turmeric, fenugreek, which I have some of. I have, I have a bunch of this stuff. I have all of it, I think. Uh, ginger, black pepper, mustard seeds, curry powder. I don't know what that is. Fennel seeds and garlic. I have all those ingredients except for the, the curry powder. I don't know what that is exactly. Okay, okay, check this out. Did you see that? Did you see the water? Watch this when this hits the water. Watch how the, what the water does. Look how the water, it, how it jumps apart like that. You didn't really, because it was already in there, you didn't quite see it. It's like when a piece, well, then a bit of oil hits water, or when water hits oil and it just all of it shoots out away from the center. Yeah, check this. I don't know if it's gonna do it again because it's already in there. No, you're not gonna get it again. It's only, oh yeah, you see, certain, it's tough to, tough to explain, certain things, when you put them in ingredients, it'll absorb the liquid and other things you put in will disperse, it'll push it away. I find that the stuff that pushes the liquid away when it hits the water is better for you. I don't know, it, that's kind of a generalization. It seems like the, the, the really astringent, healthy stuff will, will do that. I'm gonna grind some things in the mortar and pestle. I don't know if you've ever used one of these before. These things are really cool. Uh, you put in like full plant herbs and stuff and then you grind them up. Thyme, caraway seeds. This is the ingredient of the seeds in rye bread. They always stay on the stir too. I gotta remind myself not to get not to get lost. Ah, yeah. Whew. Remember smelling rye when you were a kid? You ever do that? You ever have smell rye? This is going in with the. Uh, Going with the lentils. Dash of cayenne pepper. Oh yeah, look at that. Maybe you can see again. I feel like I missed the. Uh... See how it like spreads apart like that? Did you catch that? Watch. I'll put it in the area where it's not there. See how it spreads apart? How it like spreads the water apart? That's uh. Not everything does that. Certain only certain foods do that. I like basil. Basil goes great with tomato. Tomato basil. Probably heard of it. Margarine's pretty uh. Marjoram's kind of uh, neutral. I've, I've been having a hard time locating exactly what marjoram tastes like. It's really weird. It doesn't stop me from using it though. I was gonna call it black pepper. It's white pepper. It's like black pepper, but it's white. What else is gonna go in there? Vinegar. The basil's making it stink in a good way. Starting to come together. Thyme and uh, rosemary go extremely well together. So I'm gonna add some rosemary. It's something I haven't grinded in yet. I'm gonna pass off some, some rosemary. Parsley. I tend to just grab whatever I see and add it. <laughs> it's something fun that I do, but. Some of the self-control thing is like, you know, I don't know if I really need to add, you know, celery seed or red crushed red pepper. I don't need to use it. I'm not gonna use most of this stuff. I like this stuff, chili powder, but they often put uh, an anti-caking agent in with it. Silicon dioxide. I think chili powder tends to cake, so they, they've decided to make it massively pal palatable. They want to add silicon dioxide. It's, I can't can't bring myself to cook with it, unfortunately, but I, I like chilies a lot. Ghost peppers, absolutely incredible. Habanero, nice hot orangish, and of course the jalapeno. This, a little bit of this goes a long way, man. So I gotta be careful with it. I mean, I mean a little bit. I, I, these things are so hot. I noticed watching a lot of Gordon Ramsay, like I said earlier. He'll tell you how good it is making the most amazing lentil curry. It is absolutely delicious, and like, you just believe it. I mean, he's telling you it's good. It's not like you tasted it. You add more water to the lentils, they're soaking it up. I'm gonna mash these into this 
product. Someone said, hey, if you're gonna mash stuff, rather than trying to chop it into little bits, use a fork and press down on it with a fork if you don't have a masher. Great idea. I'll see that. Great. You see, they're starting to, to like fall apart and flake. It's getting kind of little, they're like they're losing their color and they're flaking out. I've added a little bit more water to the quinoa. I'll be doing that throughout, adding a little bit more water as this, as this boil. Got some of the quinoas um, mid-boil. So they've been boiling longer than six minutes, but shorter than 13 or whatever. So you can see they're starting to explode into goo. The goo is great for uh, flavor absorption. That's why I cook it, that's why I boil it longer. Looks like they boil long enough, so I'm gonna cut the, cut the temperatures. I'm gonna pour the lentils into the quinoa now. There's a little bit of splatter. There's so many lentils and quinoas in here that I don't think that the vegetable stew I made is gonna have too much of an impact on this. So I'm gonna have to season it after everything's added. It's like 30 or 40 pounds. No, 30, 30 pounds maybe? Let's do this. It's a dense amount of flavor in that sauce. Dude, I go on about this all day. Wow, this is good. Look at this shit, dude. Look at this. I've combined all the ingredients. I'm basically, I mean, and it's up to here. So I've got to sample the flavor, make sure that everything's even, and then fix up doctor the flavor. I know that it's gonna need a little dill before I even go in there. Make an incredible, there's gonna be a coconut, curry, lentil, quinoa. Very good. Although I need to add a little I more. assume something weird's going on because Ian's awake. That's true too. I decided to uh, enchant your house today. What do you think? All right, give it to it. Yeah. I'm going deep on the curry. I might have prematurely called it a coconut curry lentil quinoa. Like it might come out and be have some other flavor or something. It's looking really good. Um, the colors are very fresh. It's very light. And I just added the sweet potato and carrot. So I dumped that in. I added a bunch, a huge scoop of this miso and a bunch of salt. I gotta let it kind of sit and simmer and collect its its uh, its flavor so that I can see what it needs next. Watch the steam when it comes off. I like to do that when I pick it up. That way you don't have to taste it or blow on it. You know how hot it is, because you'll see, you see the steam. I mean, you can blow on it. But... There's not much worse when you're cooking than burning your taste bud by tasting something that's too hot, because then you can't taste anything after. It's hard, harder to taste stuff, so you gotta be real careful not, not to burn. Ah, oh, getting good. It needs citrus. I need to do something about the citric acid in here. I got a ground mustard. That's gonna be a nice acidity for this thing. But it's not the citric acid I need, it's just, it's similar. Lemon juice, what's in here? Sodium biphosphate, no thank you. We have fresh lemons downstairs. We do, yeah. okay, I'm gonna go get a couple of those. Lemon and an orange, half an orange. Uh, you know, good enough. It's gonna be incredible in here. I the seeds. I kind of like lemon seeds. They're bitter. I imagine they're incredibly good for you. Oh, man. I'm tempted to actually use the, the lemon peel in here as well, but I don't think I'm going to. I can feel it. The food's thanking me right now. I can feel it. Oh, and also when you squeeze, if you, if you score the lemon like that, or the lime, it makes it a lot easier to juice out without it exploding. Guess what this is? Leave it in the comment below. It's the secret ingredient. Mm. 
Do you want me to tell you what this is? Because I'm not gonna. I, I, I almost, I will bet that you don't know what this is. You probably know, you might think you know, and you might be close, but you can't smell it. I'm interested, I'm interested in what you think this is. Nick tried it, Nick seems to like it. I think it's good, looking very promising, so I'm gonna cover it, turn off the heat, let it sit for about 15 or 20 minutes, and, and basically it's gonna continue to cook um, while, while it's off the heat, and then I think the flavor is gonna be fully dispersed. I don't really think there's much more that needs to be added, so I'm just gonna do that now. And when it's done, we'll check back in, see what everybody thinks.